wow, I have been on mute this whole minute. Isn't that funny? Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a paper one part B uh, essay about exchange rates. Uh, the real world example in this essay, I, I'm going to use the article in the video description below. Also in the video description below, you can find links to become a member of the channel. Uh, this is this will give you access to uh, exclusive members only content. Um, you can also find the link to buy me a coffee if you want to say thanks. If you um, appreciate uh, what I'm doing in this channel, uh, so let's get started. Um, also, please like the video, share the video, subscribe. These are all ways you can support the channel. All right. So the question is here. So using real world examples, and again, I said the real world example is the link found in the video description below. Discuss the macroeconomic consequences of a fall in a country's exchange rate. This is a paper one part B, okay? The real world example is an article by Reuters published on March 21st, so a few months ago, 2022, and the link to access is in the video description below. Um, these are the assessment criteria for paper one part B. Now, how do you access the highest level between 13 to 15 marks? Well, First, you need to show the examiner that the specific demands of the question are understood and addressed, that relevant economic theory is fully explained, that relevant economic terms are used appropriately throughout the response, where appropriate relevant diagrams are included and fully explained, that the response contains evidence of effective and balanced synthesis or evaluation. It has to be effective and balanced and that a relevant real-world example or examples is identified and fully developed to support the argument or the arguments made. All right, so let's get started. The question is, discuss the macroeconomic consequences of a fall in the country's exchange rate. I started by saying the exchange rate is the value or price of a currency in terms of another currency. Here, I am defining basically what exchange rate is. Okay, while I'm not really required to define, I prefer to always provide a definition to sort of signal to the examiner that I know what I'm talking about. A fall in the country's exchange rate could be automatic due to market forces. Here we call that a depreciation or deliberate due to government intervention. That's called a devaluation. Regardless of how the exchange rate fell, the end result is that the country's currency will be weaker and will be able to buy less of other countries' currencies. The end result of a fall in the exchange rate is that the country's exports will seem cheaper to foreigners, while imports from overseas will seem more expensive for the country's citizens. That's the end result. This can have lots of macroeconomic consequences for the economy of the country. Firstly, cheaper exports may. You'll notice I use may a lot because none of these consequences apply to all economies, okay? May, since you're kind of predicting what might happen, you have to kind of use language that shows that you recognize these are all possibilities. They're not definites, okay? Cheaper exports may lead to an increase in foreign demand for the country's exports. And this may or may not lead to an increase in export revenues, depending on the price elasticity of demand for exports it's more likely that the country's export revenues will increase in the long run rather than the short run, as it takes time for foreign consumers to respond to price changes. An increase in foreign demand for exports and an increase in export revenues may create more jobs in export industries and lead to a lower rate of unemployment and may spur economic growth. However, you'll see I'm evaluating an increase in export revenues may also lead to an increase in the economy's aggregate demand and thus may cause demand pull inflation, which is the rightward shift of AD to AD1 in figure one below. So I'm just kind of referring to the diagram that I'm going to um, explain uh, further on in the essay. Secondly, more expensive imports may lead to a decrease in domestic demand for imports. And this may or may not lead to a decrease in import expenditures, depending on the price elasticity of demand for imports. It's more likely that import expenditures will actually increase in the short run due to the inelastic nature of demand in that time period, and then decrease in the long run as domestic demand for imports becomes more 
elastic. This may cause cost push inflation in the short run, especially if the country's economy is heavily reliant on imported raw materials, fuel, and component parts, which is the leftward shift of SRS to SRS1 in figure one below. So you'll see here in figure one, I have shown the rightward shift of AD that I mentioned in the previous paragraph and the leftward shift of SRS. The rightward shift of AD is because there may be an increase in export revenues or an increase in aggregate demand. And the leftward shift of SRS is because imports are more expensive. And if this country relies on importing a lot of raw materials, uh, component parts, and so on, um, this will lead to an increase in the cost of production across the whole economy. So the end result is that real GDP may shrink. Here, it just so happens that the decrease in short-run aggregate supply is bigger than the increase in aggregate demand. But the main thing is, the end result is that the average price level rises. Okay, um, There's both demand pull and cost push inflation. And here I've got average price level on the y-axis and real GDP in Egyptian pounds. And I'll explain why, because my real world example is about the Egyptian economy. All right, so figure one drawn above shows a visual representation of the economy of Egypt. Here I'm introducing my real world example. Okay, so this is my RWE, real world example. Recently, the Egyptian pound experienced the devaluation against the US dollar due to many pressures resulting from the Ukraine war. And this has had several effects on the Egyptian economy. Firstly, Egypt relies heavily on importing food and fuel. And so this devaluation has led to higher food and fuel prices and has resulted in cost push inflation, shown as the shift of SRS to SRS1 in figure one. I'm referring back to the labels that I have used in my diagram. Remember, it's not just enough to draw a diagram, you have to constantly refer to it and incorporate it in your analysis. While figure one shows an increase in aggregate demand from AD to AD1 due to higher export revenues, this has not necessarily been happening in the Egyptian economy yet, as tourism is the main source of export revenue. And the war in Ukraine and the global pandemic have not been helping, okay? And it's okay, by the way, if my real world example doesn't fit the diagrammatic analysis. I'm just showing the examiner that these are all possibilities. The Egyptian economy is experiencing a slowdown of economic growth and real GDP may be decreasing from Y to Y1, as shown in figure one. Here you can see there's a decrease from Y to Y1. Um, additionally, the average price level seems to be rising as shown in figure one with the rise of APL to APL1. So here I've sort of set the context and I've explained my diagram, I've explained my theory. Now I'm going to, um, even though I've already kind of evaluated, I'm going to explore my evaluation further, expand on my evaluation. Moreover, the devaluation of the Egyptian pound has contributed to capital flight from the Egyptian economy as many investors and savers took their money out of the Egyptian financial system to save and invest in countries with more stable currencies. Also, the appreciation of the US dollar and the expectation of a global recession has exacerbated this capital flight from the Egyptian economy. Lastly, a fall in the country's exchange rate could add to the country's national debt burden as many countries issue debt denominated in other more stable currencies. This adds to the government's fiscal strain as more and more of the government budget is used for debt repayments, and thus less is available to fund public projects and welfare payments. Okay, you'll notice I've, I've talked about a lot of macroeconomic consequences. I've talked about the effect on aggregate demand, the effect on employment and export industries, the effect on economic growth, the effect on inflation, the effect on the government's debt burden, the effect on capital flight. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Um, all right, to conclude, a fall in the country's exchange rate. Here, I have to make sure I come back to the question and that I restate it and that I actually answer it. A fall in the country's exchange rate may have positive macroeconomic effects in terms of increasing employment in export industries and spurring economic growth due to increased export revenue. 
happiness, but may also have negative macroeconomic effects, like creating inflationary pressures on the economy, contributing to capital flight, and adding to the fiscal strain on the government. These are all possible macroeconomic consequences of a fall in the country's exchange rate. I actually borrowed this entire sentence. I borrowed it from the question. And this is how I show the examiner that I'm actually addressing the demands of the question. And they may not all apply to every country's economy as contexts and challenges differ between national economies. Okay, so you'll see what I've done is I've defined key terms. I've explained key economic theory. I've had several arguments that basically discuss all the possible macroeconomic consequences of a fall in the country's exchange rate. I had a diagram. Now you might be thinking, why is the diagram here ADAS from macroeconomics rather than an exchange rates diagram? That's a choice that I made. I didn't really want to show a decrease in the exchange rate using a diagram because I think it's kind of um, it doesn't really address the question. The question is about the macroeconomic consequences. And that's why I decided to include a macroeconomic diagram. OK, and I chose to focus on a real world example that I read in an article. The link to the article, again, is in the video description below. It's an article about the Egyptian economy and the devaluation of the Egyptian pound. It's published by Reuters on March 21st, 2022. Okay, now there are several links in the video description below. Um, there's a link to uh, say thanks, show support for the channel by buying me a coffee. You can become a member if you want access to more essays and more exclusive content. You can also uh, find the link in the video description below. Um, thank you very much for your support of my channel. And um, you know, I, I really enjoy doing this and I'm, I'm going to continue uh, publishing and creating uh, content to help you all with your journey on um, in IB economics. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, please like the video, uh, share the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the uh, video description. Sorry, in the comments section uh, below. And I um, apologize for the mishap. The first minute, by the way, <laughs> I was on mute. I'm going to try and adjust that before I upload the video. Have a great uh, rest of your week, and um, I will see you again soon. Have a good one. Bye.